Now this is more like it. You know, stress is always going to find you. It's just how you deal with it that matters. For me, I love to escape to the garden. I love smelling the roses, seeing the beautiful flowers, getting my hands in the soil. Of course, you probably already knew that about me. In today's show, we're going to spend some time in nature. We're going to look at some beautiful containers, pick out the perfect tool for the project you may have in mind, as well as do a little yoga for gardeners. So let's enjoy this beautiful day together. So I have this passion for gardening, right? You know, I just love it. And I really enjoy understanding how people got into gardening and what kinds of things they're growing. Of course, sometimes gardening can become difficult because of physical challenges. So what I've discovered is a really interesting product. It's very inspiring because it can help people get back into the thing that they love, gardening. So let me show you what I mean with my friends here at Fox Ridge. So Betty, I think this is looking really beautiful. Oh, it is, really is. I thought that these uh, little Cleomies, it's a dwarf kind of Cleomie in the center, would be really spectacular. This one's called Senorita Rosalita. What a wonderful name. Isn't that a fun name? Yeah. Physical therapy looks at a person's occupation at that point in their life, such as an elderly person. Uh, what's their job? Their job is to wake up every day, go to meals, get dressed, bathe, toilet, groom, keep themselves active. One of the other things that we look at are activities that they participated in when they were in the community. So for a lot of people, it is gardening. If you're not interested in it, if you don't really have your heart into it, you won't put much into it. And I, I enjoyed doing it. And then this little lantana will take the heat, and this one's called Luscious Lemonade. Ooh. And then I thought, why not plant a few rosemary? Some, oh, yeah. Some herbs rosemary that you can grow in great. this. Maybe they'll throw some in our food. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I brought along some of these fertilizer spikes. The good thing about this organic fertilizer is you can't burn the plants oh, up, good. which is great. So I think on these larger plants, we'd do two, and then for the smaller ones, we'd do one. But then later in the season, you can come back around and give them another little shot of fertilizer. Wow. Yeah, isn't that great? That is. Yeah. Put that one in behind the lantana there. Okay. Yeah. yeah just push it all the way into the soil there. Woo, woo, woo. Good. <laughs> Have to get in there and Let's ride see. that bike a little more to get <laughs> strong arms. <laughs> So David, this is one of those exhibitions that uh, makes you think differently about your backyard. Absolutely, and that's one of the, the biggest reasons that this was created, um, was to spark creativity, to get families and, uh, and children really. Um, <laughs> well, I'm seeing just... some of that, like the sofa over here. Oh, absolutely. That you've got it upholstered in sedums. <laughs> yeah, and sedums love the heat, and they, they can go without much water, and so it works really well. Sure. So David, I'm seeing a theme here. This is like the living room, and we're mm -hmm. walking over here toward the back. The bathroom, yeah. <laughs> and what I love about this section is, you know, you're taking something that people kind of see as ugly, you know, in a, in a way you have an old toilet, an old sink, and yet there is beauty coming out of it, which is really cool. Yeah, um, look at those begonias and that seat. I mean, you even have toothbrushes up there. <laughs> I, can, yeah. I can brush my teeth. <laughs> and the bathtub, it's overflowing with bubble bath in the way of white petunias. <laughs> yep. And of course, this must be the garage because you've got a car parked in it. <laughs> we do indeed. Uh, and you can actually see the license plate says go green, and that's kind of a theme that you'll you'll find all throughout the gardens, the sustainability, uh, you know, using alternative containers. So um, this is not so much about um, 
This is a beautiful thing to have in your backyard, but driving home the point, we need to be more conscious about the products that we have and how we use them. Absolutely. And and also, I mean, you, you also want to get kids excited. So when kids walk in here, you know, they see all <laughs> right. these incredible things, but I, you hear it every day, oh, look at that car! <laughs> it's awesome. I mean, it just... It is. Know. David, I'm seeing some really unique displays in this area. Yeah, and this is the idea garden. So this is a, the garden that changes every season. This year is re the recycled garden. You know, I've never seen a box springs used as a support for a climbing <laughs> vine. That's yep. very unusual. No, it's a great way to use recycled objects. Look at these tires. You've got some color action going here, David. Yeah, and this is one of the cool things is, again, transforming concepts of beauty and sustainability, you know, really mm. trying to use things in a creative way. And right. tires, you know, they, they have such a bad rep, uh, <laughs> reputation, do. but at the same time, you know, you paint them, you plant stuff in them. Right, and, very, and very colorful. Uh, and you can see all of these are actually cuttings from willow trees that were planted two feet deep and they actually root it. Uh, another amazing thing about willows. They will, they'll just root with big stalks like that. Yes sir, yeah. Yes. And again, just cleans the, uh, cleanse the soil. So David, the idea here is that you would actually create this shady sort of tunnel for kids to come through and explore? Exactly, and this uh, tunnel here, uh, created by cuttings, will actually in a few years be so thick that you could walk on the top of it. Really, uh, give yeah. that level of support. Absolutely. That's very good. I, I love the bench here to sit on, made with a tailgate from a truck. Yeah. <laughs> Again, using uh, anything that we can find uh, and being creative. Well, I just think any way we can constantly remind people that you, we really should look for ways for recycling and living more sustainably. It's so important. Yeah. 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 Very good. Well, keep up the great work. Thank you. Hey, pleasure. Th thanks for having me. Oh, it was an absolute pleasure. And yeah. I, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day here. Oh, I'm, I am indeed. You know, we have a little Harry Houdini here at the farm. His name is Walter. He's a white Indian runner. I've had him for years. And he, he's a master at getting out of any sort of pen. And I don't know, I mean, he's, it's like a cat. He has nine lives. How he's been able to get out, run around, and have a life all his own, and, and to not be eaten by predators is really quite astonishing. He gets out on the pond, he runs through the fields, he gets in the vegetable garden, and he's murder, murder to catch. The little guy, he's like a, he's shaped like a wine bottle on legs, and he runs through the gardens, and I mean, you can't hardly catch the little guy. The little rascal's hard to pin up. I mean, you can't even corner him. He slides between plants and through the rows, and you know, they, they don't call them runners for nothing. Just when you think you've got him cornered, the little guy just slips away. He's, just, I, I told you, I mean, he's like Harry Houdini. I'm always trying to catch him and make sure he's in a pen during the breeding season because he's also a little Don Juan. He gets in with the other ducks and I think I've got some little half Walters running around here too. Walter is certainly no couch potato. Just look at his slim, trim physique. That's part of the reason I think he can slide between gate posts, fence posts, under wires, between the hedgerows. I mean, he is just hard to handle. And when you catch him, you better hang on because he's a little wiggle worm. Thanks, Walter, for the cardio workout. You're going back to Poultryville. This is such a serene and beautiful place. Thank you, we've worked really hard to do that. And of course, nature does a lot of that too. Right, yeah, she'll meet you <laughs> so at least halfway if you're willing meet, to try. She will meet you halfway, so it does take a lot of work. Yeah. Just take some awareness of what you're working with. So Holly, it was really yoga that brought you and your husband, Matthew, here to this place. It was, we were studio owners for about 10 years. We had been practicing for 20. Mm -hmm. We were uh, teacher trainees 
for yoga teachers. So very much a lifestyle for you. It was completely a lifestyle and one of the things that we found is we got more involved with our students as they wanted the entire lifestyle. So mm. they had health issues and needed to know about how to feed themselves in a particular way to deal with it and food really is our medicine. Yeah. My husband's a trained cook as well and so we were cooking for a lot of clients and found out that we'd really like to have a place where there was no disconnect really between the food that we served them and the, you know, in, in growing it. So it was a, providing a place where people could be nourished in a whole way. So in a, in a studio setting, I can see where they're coming for an hour at a time or maybe right. two hours max. So there's only really, so much you can do. Yeah, so you wanted that broader experience for them. We did. Yoga is about relationships and um, seeing the, the intricate connection of all things. And so this is a way in which to be able to really express that. Nothing is separate here. So, so it's really about helping people make and maintain those connections that, are, that are, are really a part of us. It is. This place gives people an opportunity to be silent, to be deeply in touch with nature, to realize the consequences of their actions. It does mm. affect everything. It does. And to have a relationship with their food. Even to growing it. Absolutely. You have wonderful vegetable garden, well, you, organic vegetable you, gardens here. I think you appreciate your food a lot more when you realize how much work goes into creating really quality food. Hmm. I, I couldn't have said it and better. And so then you I want to eat a lot better, better too. Right. You do. <laughs> you're, you're, you're more discriminating about what you want to put in your body. Absolutely. So visitors here actually help grow their own food and certainly prepare it. They do. We offer um, a whole lot of opportunities here. We do workshops and retreats, uh, cooking classes even, gardening workshops, and of course immersion opportunities where they come and really learn a classical tradition. And part of that is the karma yoga, which is selfless service, and so it is going out and weeding the gardens and mm -hmm. harvesting and being all of, you know, in part of all of that. The physical, the physical physicality that, of it, yeah. Yes. Let's say someone can't break away and do the weekend retreat or be involved in a 30-day training program. What, what do you feel like they can, can do at home in the it's midst really of their very simple. busy lives? Well, it's not a complex answer. It means unplug from everything, turn mm -hmm. everything off, take your shoes off, find a place where you can get in touch with nature. It's your backyard, your front yard, just get in grass mm -hmm. and um, sit, be quiet and silent. We don't have very much silence in our lives. And I think just that opportunity, just to be quiet and realize that you are connected to all things and to take a moment for that is really all that's required to um, find the peace that you're looking for. Are, are there things that you can do? Let's say, you know, I'm in the garden a lot and I uh, love to, you know, prune and carry and so forth. Are there yoga poses that could be helpful? But so there are a lot of poses that you can do. Matter of fact, my husband's gonna show you a few, but I think you need to get changed into something more comfortable. Okay, all right, let's give it a try. Right. <laughs> One of the ways yoga posture practice can help gardeners is to strengthen the parts of their body that tend to become weak from overuse. We've got three examples of things that you can do today to help you in this way. The first posture we have for you is a variation of what's called Warrior One. Step one leg back behind you about two and a half feet. Put both hands on your hips to start. And with your right leg stepped back, hang your left arm by your side. Keep your right hand on your right hip. Now as you inhale, bend your left knee just a little bit. Take your left arm up and displace your chest slightly forward to flatten your upper back. And as you exhale, straighten your front leg and bring your left arm back down by your side. Now as you inhale, Bend that front knee again, take the left arm up, and move your heart forward slightly to flatten your upper back. As you exhale, come back to the starting position. After you do this one or two times in movement, take an inhale and move into the posture and hold it for just a few seconds, keeping your face relaxed, keeping your legs and your feet grounded, keeping your shoulders down. Well, this pose is a variation of something that we call dog pose. 
to do this, come down onto the floor where you're resting your chest on your thighs and your buttocks on your heels and your head lightly on the floor. And then to begin, as you take an inhale, slowly come up to all fours, keeping your feet and your hands grounded. Bring your shoulders back slightly, lift your heart forward and flatten your upper back. And you can look forward gently as long as it doesn't bother your neck. And as you exhale, go back to where you started. Place your buttocks on your heels and your chest on your thighs. And with another inhale, come back up and do the same thing again. Now after you've done this a few times, come into the posture and hold still in it for a few breaths and then go back to where you started. Well, this posture is a version of a reclining twist. To do this, lie down on your back, take your arms out to the sides, turn your palms down, Bend your knees slightly and put your feet flat on the floor. Rest your head softly on the floor. Now, as you take an exhalation, take both knees over to the right without lifting your feet off the floor and gently turn your head to the left. And with an inhalation, come back to the center where you started. And as you exhale, take the knees in the opposite direction and turn the head softly the other way. As in the other postures, you'd go back and forth between these positions, moving first. And then when you feel relaxed, come into one side and stay there. Each of these postures is gonna look different depending on the body type of the person who does them. So don't worry about looking like the model when you go through the versions that you're doing. Just make sure that as you do them, you move softly with your breathing and you use the least amount of muscular effort to move in and out of the pose. So your own body is really the best guide about how far to go or how far not to go. Make sure and respect your body. My must-have garden tool is called a dibble or a dibber. It's um, like a spike and you rotate it and you can do little tiny holes for seedlings, bigger seedlings or actual, I've used it for planting annuals. It's really great for what I call speed planting. You can, you can do it instead of scooping, you can just poke these holes, dig them like that and you can pop in small plants really quickly. My must-have gardening tool is my Hori Hori knife. It's, it's like a trowel, but it's a lot stiffer, and it has a serrated, it has a point. It's great for digging, it's great for, you can open your bags, you can cut with it. My go-to garden tool, I actually have two of them. The, one of them is a bypass pruner, um, so I take that out with me everywhere I go, put them in my cargo pants pocket, but it's just great for making those, those small, clean cuts. My weed eater right now is my favorite garden tool, and I think it's because my neighbor has so much vinca major and it's constantly encroaching into my yard, and the only thing I can do is weed eat it and then try to mulch over the top of it. My second go-to tool would be my DeWitt potting scoop. It's, it's, it's a hefty tool that's not gonna break and it's got a cutting edge on it, but the, it's like a trowel, but it's scooped, so you can use, get a whole lot of material in it.
Wow, they're working really hard. You know what? I think they could use a little escape. Let's go. I love my team. They're all very hardworking. They're just great. A few years ago, we started a staff garden. So every once in a while, they could get away from the office, come down here and smell the flowers, cut a few herbs, and maybe even do a little weeding. How's it coming over here? It's very important, I think, for anybody to have um, sort of an escape to nature, to be able to get outside of the office, to get away from the computer, to unplug, just get your hands in the dirt and watch what you can grow because I think there's something really fulfilling about planting either a seed or a baby plant or whatever and just seeing what comes out of just something that, that you grew yourself. Being stuck behind a computer editing all day, uh, we don't have a, a window or anything like that. So just being able to walk outside and take care of the vegetables and learn a little bit about what it takes to grow your own food. I spend about probably seven hours on the computer at work. I do think it helps me work better because it gets me away from the computer for a couple of minutes. I go to the staff garden a couple times a week to check on the vegetables to see what's growing and then I clip herbs and tomatoes and take them home with me. I've always kind of wanted to dabble in gardening but I never have um, and I almost felt like I had to you know when I came here because everybody else was gardening so we did the staff garden down the street. I also did a little gardening at home. I never grew vegetables before I started working here so having this staff garden has taught me a lot. I've learned about what's a cool season vegetable and what grows in summer. I had no idea that spinach was not like a year-round plant. I thought it grew in summer. Wrong. It grows in the spring. I learned something very important. It might be one of the most important things in gardening, and that is squash has to be pollinated. Otherwise, you just get yellow flowers instead of things to eat. So um, no squash for me this year. Probably my favorite thing that's down at the staff garden that I like to um, use at home is rosemary because it's my favorite herb and it smells wonderful and it's really easy to grow. My favorite vegetable is tomatoes because I like to make marinara sauce. My favorite thing that's growing over there is the sweet basil and uh, I love to mix it of course in a caprese salad. I would say my favorite thing out of the garden is tomatoes. I would imagine that's probably a pretty popular choice as well. They're very easy to grow. The best thing about the staff garden is that it's super easy to maintain because you have an entire posse of people taking care of it. My happiness increases as I walk to the staff garden. All right, gang, it's time to get back to work. Let's head on down to the office. Time to get back. We all have things to do. Office, work, we need to go. Well, it's been great spending time together, but now it's time for you to get out there and get your hands in the soil. Come up with a project that you want to do. Create your own escape. And if you'd like some ideas, you can always go to my Pinterest page. Until next time, from the Garden Home, I'm Alan Smith. There's some parsley there. You can take some parsley. Mm -hmm. Here's some more parsley. It's good stuff, yeah. Oh, good parsley here. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, look at all that. That's good, yeah. This place looking like something. I can do it. You know, I'm a big mouth too. <laughs> Good. I'm bossy as well. Well. Are you bossy? <laughs> well, just a little. <laughs> <laughs> Comes in handy, I think. <laughs> and you all behave. Right. <laughs>